to start by removing this hubcap and then the wheel. If you don't have steel wheels with the hubcaps, then you don't have to worry about this. But for me, 19 millimeter socket, remove these plastic caps that hold the hubcap on. Take this off and set it aside. Continuing with the 19 millimeter socket, take off all five of your lug nuts and then remove the wheel. Okay, this wheel's stuck, so let's put on a lug nut and then hit the tire from the back side. With a rubber mallet, hit the tire, not the rim. You don't want to damage the rim. There we go. Take the uh, lug nut off and remove the wheel. Now to take this drum off, it's pretty stuck on here, so I sprayed some rust penetrant in between the studs and around the center hub here. And I'm just going to use my hammer, hammer on different parts of it and hopefully break it free. There we go, it's off. Before I continue, I wanna use some brake parts cleaner on this whole thing and remove the dust that's here. I don't wanna breathe it in or uh, getting it in the air more than I already did. So just clean it all off. All right, so before I take off the bolts that hold the wheel bearing on, I wanna disconnect this ABS sensor. There's a clip that if you come in from up top and kind of pry it back, you can remove the wiring harness. And, uh, it's hard to see and hard to reach. There it goes. So here's the, uh, the connector. Set it aside. I'm actually just gonna pop it out of here so that it's out of my way completely. All right, now let it hang here. And then with a 15 millimeter deep socket, you need a deep one so you can clear the stud here. Uh, you want to take off the four bolts that hold this on. There's one. Two. Take the two nuts and remove them, and then we can take this wheel bearing right off. I'm gonna start by removing this spring here, using some needle nose locking pliers. I find those the best tool to use for uh, uh, doing brake shoes just because they lock onto the springs and the spring can't fly off. With some locking pliers, I'm gonna clamp on to these springs here, or the, the caps on the springs. Press in and twist to unlock it. I'm holding the pin on the back side. Remove that, remove the pin and save it for a reinstallation. Let's do the same to this other one over here. Remove it, press it through. To remove this spring on the back side, I'm gonna lock in some locking pliers nice and tight. And there we go. Just trying to unhook it from there. Release that. Now your shoes are free at the top and uh, you can pull them off. Everything comes apart. There we go. And last thing that's here is this parking brake lever. That's the last thing holding the shoes on. So press back on the spring and you just want to pull this end through. There we go. Okay, at this point you can take all your hardware off of your old shoes and save it for the new shoes. Okay, let's uh, try to open this bleeder screw. There we go. Brake fluid will come out as well as some air bubbles. Let's let all the air bubbles flow out of this. That way we make sure um, we have no air in the system. And once that's done, you can either close it off and call it done or perform a full manual brake bleed, which I recommend. All right, this is pretty much good. Let's close it off.
Okay, snug it. Clean up your mess here so it doesn't look like there's a leak. And now don't forget to cap it off with this rubber cap. Uh, this will ensure that no debris makes its way inside of the bleeder screw because if it does, it's gonna clog it up. Perfect. I'm gonna reinstall this little boot here before I forget. That way it's watertight. Let's scrape off all the debris that has built up on this backing plate to make sure it's nice and clean for the brake shoes. Before I install this adjuster, I want to clean it and lubricate it. This one's already basically brand new looking, so I don't have to clean anything, but I will grease it up. That way it doesn't rust in the future and it operates smoothly. Let's put a little bit of grease on these threads here and uh, the grease will work its way in there and then you can adjust it to work the grease into this little adjuster. Add some grease on the other end. You don't need a whole lot, just enough to cover the threads. And bring it back. Perfect. Now we can wipe off the excess and install it. Let's grease up the backing plate right on these three raised areas where the shoes sit. It's gonna help them slide smoothly and quietly. Do the same on this side. Make sure that you grab the right brake shoe and uh, the lever basically for the parking brake has to sit on the front of it, not on the back side. Pull back on this spring and let's reattach the, uh, the cable onto this lever. I locked some locking pliers on here. Slide the parking brake shoe in. Unlock your pliers. You can do this by hand too, it just kind of hurts to pull the spring back. Take your pin, put it through the backing plate, and then put it right through this shoe. Make sure the shoe is sitting kind of where it's supposed to. Put the spring back on here. Bring the shoe where it needs to be. And line up the, uh, the pin with this cap. Once it's through, rotate it 90 degrees to lock it on. Let go, position your shoe, and now this is secured. Let's get this spring, and there's actually a hole right behind here. That's where the spring needs to go. It's hard to see. So this spring on the back side for the top goes right in that little slot there. It's uh, pretty hard to get on, but if you find the right angle, you can get it on. At this point, let's get the forward shoe with the adjuster and this lever. Everything has to already be on here when you go to put it in. Set it down where it's supposed to go. And now at this point, you can take this pin, slide it through the back side, through the front here, hold the shoe. Start the spring on on this cap and let's lock it on. Line it up with the direction of the pin, press it on, turn it 90 degrees, unlock your pliers, make sure the shoe is still in position. Perfect. This is all still in here. Now you want to grab that spring at the back and it actually hooks into this hole right here. Grab the spring with locking pliers. There we go. You kind of have to just like bend the locking pliers or twist them, I guess. Not bend them until that hooks on. Let's get this lever back in to slide it up and then press it onto that um, pin there. That's what locks it in. Now expand this adjuster until it bottoms out up against the shoes. Just like that, we'll adjust it further later. Last thing is the spring on the bottom. That goes in here, and this one's a tough one because it's pretty big, so I need my large needle nose locking pliers. I'm gonna lock them on super tight and try to stretch it over. Stretch it, bring it over, press it into place. It's not fully seated. I'm gonna grab my hammer and just press it into place. There we go. 
Got the shoe back into position. It was kind of sliding down. Let's reattach the spring for this adjuster lever. It hooks on with the shorter side onto the lever and then the longer side actually goes right into that hole over there. So grab it with your locking pliers and pull it down, hook it in, make sure it's seated. All right, now this is able to self-adjust as the brakes wear out. Okay, so just make sure the, uh, the shoes are lined up. This one kind of fell down a little too, so bring it up. All right, center them. You don't want them to be leaning to one side or the other, then the drum won't go on. Make sure that everything is into position. Sometimes they fall off on the bottom here and they'll be sitting on top of this retainer. Everything looks good. Nothing is uh, loose. I'm gonna tension up this adjuster. Perfect. Let's get the drum on and then adjust the shoes. Spray some NECs on the hub area here. Try not to get it on the brake shoes too much, but this will prevent the, um, the drum from sticking on in the future. Now take your drum and I like to put it on backwards only because it'll be easiest to clean the surface this way. So spray it down with some brake parts cleaner. This is coated in oil from the factory and of course you want to clean up the oil before you fully install. Otherwise your brake shoes are going to be covered in oil and they will not stop the car. So clean that off. Now flip it over and let's install it the right way. And this should slide right on. If it doesn't, that means the shoes are adjusted too far out. But this actually sounds pretty good. Um, I do need to tighten them up a little bit. But what you want is um, actually with the wheel on is the best way to, to go by it. You want the shoes to have enough friction to stop the wheel or slow it down after one and a half turns. So um, with no brake pressure applied or parking brake engaged at all, with the wheel on, spin it, and you want no more than one and a half turns on the, uh, the wheel. So without the wheel, that would be about maybe half a turn to a turn because the weight of the wheel will keep it going. So let's take this back out and expand these shoes a little bit because this is a little too free flowing for my liking. So I'll twist this, I'm turning it down, and this pushes the shoes out a little bit. Do little by little because a small adjustment will actually make a big difference. So let's get the drum back on and see what that did. Okay, that's pretty good, but it's still a little bit too free flowing, but I can feel a slight difference. So I'm actually going to keep going a little bit. Let's do um, well, another few turns. All right, let's go about there and see what this did. Okay, this feels better. Okay, so I think right about there is good. I'm spinning it and after about half a turn it stops. If for some reason you need to adjust it after the wheel is on, take that rubber boot off at the back and you'll get a screwdriver in here and reach the adjuster wheel with the wheel on. So let's get this back and uh, let's put the wheel on. Let's get the wheel back on. Start on all five of your lug nuts, bottom them out, torque them to 100 foot-pounds. Okay, let's get the hubcap on. When you put on this hubcap, make sure that this little slot lines up with your valve stem. If it doesn't, it's just gonna get crushed when you put the hubcap back on. And use your 19 millimeter and just screw these little plastic caps on. This is what secures this onto the wheel. So if you don't, if you don't tighten these up, um, well, it could fly off on you. So make sure these are nice and snug, but don't use your air gun or electric gun on this because you'll strip them out. Just do these by hand. All right, take it for a road test.